Hey everybody, Papa Dennis here with another tutorial video for the Yamaha Mo DX. I have neglected to point out in previous video, videos that, excuse me, that um, most of the stuff I teach about the Mo DX or show you about the Mo DX, most of that stuff also applies to the Yamaha Montage, which is the Mo DX's uh, bigger brother or bigger sister. Um, the Montage came first and then the Mo DX followed. So the Modi X, as you, most of you probably know, is just a, a somewhat scaled down version of the Montage. So Montage is the flagship of the Yamaha line. But the Modi X is a fantastic little keyboard in its own right. And a uh, fairly quick video today talking about getting samples into the Modi X. Um, it's, uh, it's not hard. But it's a little counterintuitive because it uses this um, this button called init. So I'm I'm in the category performance category search page, and right here is a button called init. When you hit that, you get a choice of four different types of performances that you can create. Uh, init normal using the the AWM2 engine, which is a a, a sample playback engine. You can do init normal with the FMX engine, which of course uh, creates FM synthesized sounds. You can do a drum performance or a multi slash general MIDI. Uh, I've never done multi slash general MIDI, so I'm not going to talk about that. And uh, of course, many of you probably know that in the Mo DX, if you do create a performance, for example, using this sampling engine, the AWM2 engine, you can add parts to it that use the FMX engine, meaning your performances don't have to be one or the other. They can be combinations of the two. Uh, very cool and powerful. Uh, so let's, let's uh, talk about getting a sample in. You would, you would go init, <clears throat> and I'm going to just take a uh, init normal. I'm going to hit exit which takes me to the performance homepage. And by default, you get this generic piano sound. Yeah, generic piano sound, which we don't want. So we're going to, um, we're gonna uh, hit edit on this part. And we're gonna go to element one, right? And we're gonna say new waveform. And I've got my USB memory stick plugged into the back of the keyboard and it has only two wave files on it so let's let's take this one called locked synth sweep up and what you want to do is you want to uh, when you're bringing samples into the Mo DX or the montage you want wave files and it'll take 44 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz wave files I don't think it'll take JPEG files. In fact, I'm pretty sure it will not. So you want WAV files on your memory stick, plug it into the back of the keyboard. And now I've got that, um, that particular sample loaded in, and it's kind of a sound effect that I, that I use for the song uh, Locked Out of Heaven. But um, that's all there is to that. Let me just show you a couple of things about it. Um, let's say, by default, it's going to center it on middle C, and the pitch will change as you move up and down the keyboard. Let's say I wanted this pitch to really be up here because of the performance that I'm putting it in, which has other things happening down here, which is actually the case of, of the performance that I used it in. So to move it, very simple, you just go chorus, and uh, how far up is this? Well, it's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So you want to go down 19 semitones. And yeah, so there's the same sound up there. And then you would, you can hit exit, and you typically would not want it happening below that starting point. So I'm going to have it start there. That's it. Now, let's say, let's say we wanted to add another, another sample part into this performance, a new performance. I can go to part two, say plus. 
you have to select init again. And now I'm going to uh, do a percussive uh, sample, percussive sample, exit, and edit. And now you've got a different screen because this is a drum type part. I think by default it'll start off like, like this. What you want to do is go over to drum key. And then you're going to, and this will be off by default, I think. And you want to, you want to uh, turn on keyboard select. And the sample that, I'm lo that you're loading in, you have to decide where you want it. I tend to put percussive sampled sounds at the far left end of the keyboard. So I'm going to select E0. And I'm going to say I want a new waveform to happen down there. And I'm going to use this get down single blip dot wave. And there it is. There it is. That happens to be a sound effect that I use in the song um, Get Down On It by Cool and the Gang. So there it is. And I also want to limit him to just that, that E0. Okay. If I didn't do that, like if, if I didn't do that, then yeah, you'd have drum you'd have drum parts all over the keyboard, which you don't want. So uh, limit, limit him to E zero. Um, now, there's a couple of other little features that these two different types of sample parts ha have. I want to show you. Uh, let's start with the drum guy. I'll hit edit on him. Again, we're, we're in the drum part of this new performance, and there's something called receive note off. By default, is on. <laughs> okay, receive note off is on. Well, what does that mean? Receive note off means when you let go of a key, that's that's an off. That's that's a note off signal. So, if note off is on, then when you release a key, the sound will stop. Uh, but what if you want to just be able to hit a key and not have to hold it down to play the entire sound? Which may happen occasionally. You can turn that off. And then... Yeah, you really can't, can't hear it clearly, but I'm just, I'm just tapping the key very quickly and letting it go. And it plays the entire sample. Let, let me go back in and I'll turn this guy back on. And... Yes, yeah, so I'm doing the same thing. I'm tapping it and letting go. But, it's, but that receive note off uh, <laughs> function is turned on. So, so it is turning the note off as soon as I let go, as soon as I release the note. As far as I've been able to tell, that receive note off function, if you want to call it a function, is not available for a non-drum type of part. So let's look at this guy. Part one is this. I'm pressing edit. Part one is this sound effect. And I've looked and I've not been able, been able to find receive note off anywhere in the parameters for this guy. So if I wanted, if I wanted to be able to have these guys not stop when the key was released, I could not do it with this type of part. If it's, if it's hidden, buried in there somewhere, please let me know. I, I, I could be wrong about that. But it seems that the receive note off is something that's only available to you if you've got a, a drum type part. Now, is this a problem? Not really. It's just, um, it's just one of those things you need to know, I guess. Yeah, so um, the, the basic rules then... If, now, now, by the way, let's say you have an existing... Let's say you have an existing performance, and I'll just pick one randomly. Um, doesn't matter. Here we go a long train running, performance home. Yeah, let's say I wanted to add some kind of a sample into an existing performance. Well, you do the same thing. You can take one of your unused parts, hit the plus sign, init, <clears throat> and then it, you're going to load in a drum, percussive type sample, or some kind of a musical sample or other sound effect. Um, you pick that. Let's say we'll, we'll go with this guy. Now let's say I'm going to do a drum something. Exit. And then you hit edit immediately. Edit button. And now you pick your key. Let's say E0 again. And 
You pick your waveform. Let's go with that blip sound again. And you're done. And if I solo this guy, there he is. So it's that easy to load a sample into an existing performance. Pretty much this, just about the same process you would use if you were start uh, creating a new performance from scratch. So is there a button called load sample? No, there is not. <laughs> uh, but init is, is the function that you want. So I hope that simplifies it. If there are questions, let me know. But I think that should do it. So thanks as always for watching.